Samsung used to have the flip-style foldable market wrapped up, but there's been no shortage of killer competition recently. Oppo and Huawei have really stepped up their game and Motorola has brought back the Razer range in a big way. The Razer 40 Ultra is the best of the bunch and could be the Galaxy Z Flip 5's biggest rival when it lands in the next few weeks. We've not spent a huge amount of time with the Z Flip 5 just yet, so can't give a final verdict, but in this video we have broken down how it stacks up to the Razer 40 Ultra and where one takes the lead over the other. Motorola has long since ditched the chin from the reborn Razer range, and its latest effort is more streamlined than ever. Its 3.6 and cover display fills more of the front of the phone than the Z Flip 5's new flex window, with punch hole gaps for the dual camera lenses. The Razer 40 Ultra uses a mix of metal, glass, and depending on the model, vegan leather with a hinge which folds completely shut with no gap. It can stay part open between 45 and 140 degrees. The whole thing is IP52 rated, which means better dust resistance than the Z Flip 5, but worse water resistance. It's much more streamlined than previous Razer efforts and a lot more colorful to boot. The Flips is limited to subtler pastel hues. Samsung also banished the gap for this latest phone generation, using a new hinge which folds completely shut. The much bigger external screen dominates the front of the phone now, but the overall shape and design hasn't changed all that much from the previous model. There's nothing in it between the two phones as far as thickness or weight goes. Either way, you're getting a slick clamshell phone and which is better looking will boil down to personal preference. Going purely by the spec sheet, it might be Motorola that has the better pair of displays. While the pair of camera lenses punch through the Razer's outer display panel, it's still a fair bit larger, at 3.6 inches to the Z Flip 5's 3.4 inches. It has a much higher resolution and an impressive 144Hz refresh rate. Samsung has stuck to a 60Hz panel. The Razer can even play HDR10 Plus content thanks to an 1100 nit peak brightness and more apps play nicely with it right now. Inside, the Z Flip 5's 6.7 inches flexible AMOLED is smaller than the Razer's 6.9 inches panel and maxes out at 120 Hz. The Moto manages 165 Hz in certain situations with LTPO tech to dynamically adjust on the fly in order to keep power consumption in check. Both have the same 2640 by 1080 resolution, though, so it's the Samsung that squeezes in more pixels per inch. Ultimately, these are two very tasty sets of screens and worth every penny their manufacturers are asking for them. But we've got to hand the win to Motorola until a full review says otherwise. In the camera department, both the Z Flip 5 and Razer 40 Ultra have a pair of rear cameras, plus a single selfie cam for the inner display. Samsung has kept the same 12 megapixels main and 12 megapixels ultra-wide snappers as the previous Gen Z Flip 4, but upgraded the lenses in order to cut down on light flaring. Optical image stabilization and dual pixel PDAF should help the lead camera take a high quality shot, even if its f/1.8 aperture lens isn't quite as wide as the Razer's. Motorola has gone for a 12 megapixels main snapper with PDAF OIS and an f/1.5 aperture lens. It's paired to a 12 megapixels ultra wide with autofocus, a 108 degree field of view, and f/2.2 aperture lens. That's a narrower view than the Flip 5's 123-degree ultrawide, but macro focus adds some extra versatility. Video recording tops out at 4K at 60fps and can manage 120fps footage at full HD. The Razer's inner camera gets a 32-megapixel sensor and f/2.4 lens, which is more than triple the pixel count of the Flip 5's 10-megapixels punch-hole camera. But it's not all about numbers. Motorola has historically been a step behind Samsung on image processing terms, so we're expecting the Z Flip 5 to produce more pleasing pics overall. Final judgment is being withheld for a full review, as on paper Motorola have the upper hand. Samsung's ongoing partnership with Qualcomm means the Z Flip 5 lands with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, a bespoke tuned version of the flagship chip, which runs a little quicker than the off-the-shelf versions used by rival manufacturers. It's paired to 8 gigs of RAM and your choice of 256 or 512 gigs of onboard storage. We're expecting it to be up there with the fastest flagship phones currently on sale and have more than enough grunt for gamers. The Razer 40 Ultra only arrived a few months ago, but it uses a previous gen Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor. This is by no means a sluggish phone, but it isn't quite as zippy as the Flip 5 or as energy efficient. The 128 gigs base model and step up 256 gigs version has 8 gigs of RAM, while the 512 gigs range topper gets 12 gigs for smoother multitasking, 
But which models are available to you depends on where you are in the world. Motorola has found room inside the Razer 40 Ultra for a 3800 mA battery, which gives it a minor lead over the Flip 5's 3700 cell. But that phone's processor should consume a little less juice, so we're expecting it to be neck and neck as far as longevity goes. The Razer can charge over Type-C at 33 watts, which is better than the Flip's 25 watts, but wireless charging is slower at 5 watts to the Samsung's 15 watts. Now with a larger cover screen, uprated internals, and a fold-shut hinge, the Galaxy Z Flip 5 is a healthy upgrade over Samsung's last-gen clamshell phone. But the Razer 40 Ultra is easily Motorola's best folding effort to date, and the two trade blows in several areas. One has better dust resistance, the other copes better with water, one has a bigger battery and slightly faster charging speeds, the other has a more efficient CPU. They both have capable camera hardware, but Samsung's image processing has been more consistent than Mono's. The Razer's magenta color is arguably more of a head-turner than the Flip 5's subtle pastel shades. It's also a little easier on the wallet. We reckon it's a strong choice for those who dare to be different, but ultimately still expect the Samsung to be the more popular buy. But you tell us in the comment section below, which one will you choose over other and why? And if you guys enjoyed the video, then a sub to the channel will be massive and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you for the next time. Peace out. What's so special about Samsung foldables? Samsung is a frontrunner in the evolution of foldable smartphones advancing foldable technology year after year. Tell me more. Certainly. Your prompt is new. Oh, okay. Galaxy Z Flip 5, you first. Well, well, well. The compact form factor, along with its timeless color palette, is a perfect balance of style and function. Stunning. In other words, wowzer! But don't take my word for it. Look! Love the form factor and pocketability? If pockets had feelings, they'd write love letters to this phone. Oh. Oh! New prompt! What's pocketability? This. This is pocketability. I never really had a pocket, but pocketability seems like a big hit with people who do. What's next? Hi. Oh. <gasps> Look at you, flex window. Are you saying a big flex window on a Galaxy Z Flip 5 delivers plenty of space for you to flex your style and showcase more personality? Big statement. Prove it. Is that all you got? Cool designs. Oh, wow, so many options. Ah! Am I seeing double, or are you displaying multiple widgets at once? Oh, you want me to pick? Okay, how about music? Oh yeah, here we go. Flex cam, let's do it. Let's see. Mm, this is her favorite. The rest, delete. Hands free, it's like a tripod. Camcorder mode, they see what you see. Wait, 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 what's this? 12 megapixel pro-grade sensor rear camera? High-res Flexcam selfie. Flexcam seems like a unique reason to get Galaxy Z Flip 5. Let me go through it again. What did I learn? Big flex window, widgets, pocketability, Flexcam, 